Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Code with Pete. In this video, we are going to talk about how to add Open API three based documentation with the Spring Boot application. Before jumping into the code, let's see what is Open API three. Open API three is the specification to describe the RESTful APIs. It can be used both by the consumers or the producer of the APIs. The description of the API could be in terms of its endpoints and what kind of methods it supports, such as GET, PUT, POST or what kind of requests will be sent to the server or response you as a consumer are expecting from the server. There are different kind of tools available which can be used to define the document, visualize the document and also generation of the code, be it the server side code or the client side code. If you have a document already in place, so you can generate the code from the existing document. Now let's try to understand the structure of the document. So we haven't defined any document as of now for that what we can do is we can just go to the github and there is the pet clinic document already available in the github so we can just go through this this document and we'll see how this document is structured and what are the basics of open api3 documentation this is the yaml based document so you can create your document in the form of json as well but now looking at this document, it may not be very clear how to read this document and everybody need to understand the structure to understand this document, right? But for that purpose, we have editor.swagger.io tool. Here we can just copy this document. And if we go to the Swagger editor here, there are two sides of it. On the left side, you can define your document and on the right side, this document can be visualize you can also import the document from the existing system so if you have a server of where your api is already running so you can just import the url you can import the yaml file or any other file or once you have defined your document you can save it in the form of yaml or the json form so now when we copied this thing on the right side we can see everything about the apis at the top it gives you basic information of the server you can define the license information and if you see there are different apis available and you can see what kind of operations it supports so if i just click on this pad here you can see there are different parameters these are the parameters that you will pass to the api and also you can see there is some kind of description provided here and it it gives you a description of the parameter it defines the type of the parameters if you go down below you can see the responses from this api so whenever you hit this api you can possibly see these kind of responses so you have 200 status for this you will get a list of pets uh, as a developer you want to see what is the schema what is the structure of the response so you can define your structure in the same way here it is a type of pet and id name and tag are the fields of this object similarly you can define multiple responses from the same api it could be like 400 errors 401 errors 500 errors or it is possible that your API is responding in multiple ways for a positive 200 response. To define this thing, there is a certain structure of the YAML document. Whenever you define your document at the top, this is the open API. So here you will define the version of your API. Similarly, you can define different information of your server. So suppose this is version 1.000. This version you can see coming over here. If I change this thing and I say my document as soon as you change anything you can immediately visualize how it is going to look like the most important aspect of your API documentation is the paths within paths you can define first endpoint its method name some information of your API what it does similarly you can add more descriptive information so you can define the description and here you can say detailed information of the api here it will give you more detailed information and then it comes the tags so here we have the pads tag so you can define multiple tags suppose i'm saying other tags so now your api will be within the pads tag and it is also within the other tags then you can define the parameters so you can have different kind of parameters in in you can define query or this could be a path parameters this could be a header and also you can define the schema schema is basically the information of the type similarly you can define the responses within 200 response what kind of response you gonna get like the description this would be your headers and the media type of your response 
and then further to this there is a schema so now whenever you have this 200 response this schema will be returned as the output so for that in the api documentation you have a components within that you can define your schemas so now if you just go down so we have this components within this you can define your schemas within this schema you have type and similarly you can define multiple types over here and every type will then have some of the field which are required properties and their types so this is how you just describe your document to verify how you can define your api structure you, you can go through the open api stocks as we have seen in the document of the pet clinic we had this open api and then information and servers pass component security and tax etc within information you, you can have different information of your server like this title description term of service contact within contact you can have then name url email whenever you will define this information it will be displayed on your swagger document server information you can have multiple servers so you can find out all the required information to add in your document from this specification and you can create your open api documentation now let's look at how we can add the api documentation in the spring boot application for adding the API documentation, we have added Spring Dog Open API UI plugin. So it adds two endpoints in our API server. One is the API Docs. It gives you the documentation of your APIs. So you can even download this doc using the extension, say YAML. So it will download the API document for you. Similarly, we have got another URL, which is swaggerui.html. So if you hit this thing, so here you can see that you have already a couple of APIs are exposed in the documentation. So we have the create user API and we have get user API. We haven't added anything as of now in terms of the code. How this plugin works is it automatically takes care of the default documentation by looking at all of the beans which are annotated by the REST controller. It identifies all the mappings, the post mapping, get mapping and based on that it just extract the paths and based on the input to your methods in your apis it extract them out and define your request and similarly the responses from your api gets added to your documentation this is the default behavior of the api documentation when you don't add any of the code it adds the description as per the default behavior and also it defines the server wherever your application is running so now what we will try to do is we will add the custom behavior to our document for that we will go to the code so we have added one config open api config the default behavior is that it returns the new open api and it automatically adds the default information with the server now we are going to add a couple of information in our open api so for that we have added the info object this info object has a builder wherein you can add the title description and you can also add the license to your information and the contact again takes the name email and url also you can define version of your api documentation so for now let's add 1.0.0 this is one part also we want to add multiple servers so for that we have added these servers and the servers contains the url and the description so for local environment we have local host similarly for uat environment we can have the example.uat.com and for the production we have the example.com now if you look at the documentation so we have got this title which is the custom title and the version also here we have the license information similarly we have the contact so whatever contact information we have added in our documentation all of this information you can see here similarly here we have different servers so the, for the local environment there is local server then we have beauty environment and the production environment if you try to execute the request so you can see that the request which has been created is from the local environment so you can use the curl command to execute your query or you can also use the rest clients such as postman to execute your queries now if i just change this to the uat environment so on executing this query the environment is different now 
now we will try to run the api so here we have the users api we will try to execute this query and for this we have first name middle name last name and email when i try to execute this so you can see that we have got the response if you just look at the schema here we have first name middle name last name and email these fields are required right and now if i remove one of the mandatory field here so in this case the response is coming as the error in the set of responses that we have defined we just have one response which is the successful response so from our api it is possible that it is going to throw 400 error or it could throw 500 or 401 error so now we will try to fix this thing and for that let's go back to our code for adding the multiple responses in your documentation we can use the api responses and within these responses we can define value this value again consists of multiple api response so already one api response which is the default response that we are getting in the form of user so here we can add the same response api response and we can define it here so we have response code 200 we can define the description response for successful user creation in the response you can define the description you can define the response code also if this api is returning you different headers so you can define the array of headers so you can also define the content so here what we will do is we will define the content so this is content and within this content we have the media type which is application json and also we can define the schema and this schema is the actual response the response object so here we have user so user dot class so this has to be defined within the implementation so this is one of the response similarly there is another response which is the error response so here we can define the error response in the same way so instead of 200 now we have 400 bad requests and the bad request and for the bad request we have seen here and for this we have defined the api error in our domain so this api error is actually returning the message and invalid fields so we have defined this error here similar thing we can do for the create user request also and here search right and here instead of the user we just need to return the user creation response so now the uh, response for successful user search and also we have got the 400 and bad request and here we have this message similarly for create user we have got the 200 response for successful user creation and bad request for the error message now still if you see uh, in both of these apis we don't have enough information so we would like to tell the users what this api is for and how it works so we can define some of the more information with it operation and within operation we can define the summary and the summary is api for user creation and we would like to describe it more so we can add more description to it this api creates user you can define other informations as well but for now let's keep this way now if you look at your api documentation so here we have api for user creation if you see here we have this user id and this is the path parameter here we need to define the example value of it we can simply add the example value here and this could be one two three four there are other objects for which the value is already set like first name string middle name so based on their type the example value has been automatically added in the documentation we would like to make it a little better so for that with the user we can just add the schema and the example and the value would be suppose one two three four similarly for every other type we will add the schema example okay now we have added the example value for all of these values similarly we can add these example value for other objects as well so here we have the message which are created user id which is one two three four right and so we have added the example value here similarly we will add in the api error and then you have example and the value would be 
uh, error message and here we have got the list of fields so we can add the example here and define this string and we just need to pass it now we can see we have got the values one two three four here and similarly in the response we have the the example values and basically these values can be referred by the consumers right and similarly here we have the responses for the list of values as well now we have enabled the security in our apis so it returns the 401 error and if you just add basic auth with the username and password so we get the response so here we have the configuration for the web security along with this we will add the security scheme and that is the security scheme and its type would be the security scheme type dot http uh, as we are using the basic authentication so here you can define the basic auth and scheme and this is basic right and let's start the server again now if we reload our server so here you can see we have got the authorized and as we have added the basic auth so you can provide a username and password here and then the password based on this you will be able to hit your apis and similarly we can add the 401 error over here now we will add the tags with the request so here with the operation you can define different tags so and here we can say user creation and user access so here again we have api users and in the user access as well we have api users so this is all about the api documentation with the spring boot i hope you like this video thank you for watching